When the spirit of man is unawakened, he cannot know the great self within him, of which he is a part. Not knowing his true nature, and unable to see clearly, he is blinded by material delusions. Would not the creatures of the night, which never see the sun, deem the moon to be the most brilliant light in the sky above? So it is with man walking in the darkness of spiritual unconsciousness. He says, I am body, and the body is my whole being. And in the delusion of that belief, he becomes ensnared in an existence bound to matter. Like the creatures bound to an existence in the night, which cannot know the glories of things flourishing in the brilliance of daylight, so it is with men bound to the darkness of spiritual ignorance. The above verse from the Colburn is explaining the spiritual ignorance of man who does not understand he is more than just his physical container, and that this flawed perception actually creates his reality, and he is trapped in bondage to the illusion of the material plane. The verse is also perfectly representing the next tarot card, number seven, the chariot, and is symbolic of the ethereal form of the male and female twin souls and the ethereal plane. As we have discussed previously, our souls move between the material and ethereal plane during our incarnations on this realm. This ethereal plane is also relayed in the Greek mythology of Hades. Hades was not only a place where one could face a time of torment as a soul while awaiting their physical incarnation, but the mythology also tells there were levels within Hades where the good souls spend their time in a beautiful garden awaiting to be incarnated again. On the ethereal plane, we are closer to the divine, and as such, we have a full understanding of ourselves. However, we do not have the benefit of this understanding when we incarnate physically onto the material plane. So let us look further into the chariot card and see what we can unlock within its symbolism to help us better understand the true extent of our potential and who we really are. The chariot card is card number seven. The number seven is relating to the seven energy points or primary chakras within our ethereal form. It is also relating to the seven gates, which are symbolic of the ascent from the root chakra, our first gate, back to reunite with God consciousness at the seventh gate, which equates to the crown chakra. If we look to the ancient Egyptian number key, we will see that the number seven is also connected with the root chakra. This is again symbolic of the ascent of the soul back to God consciousness which begins at the root chakra, the first gate. These seven gates back to the divine can also be related to the Sumerian mythology of the goddess Inanna who was symbolic for the divine female twin soul and her journey of sacrifice as she passes through each of the seven gates of the underworld. The underworld being symbolic for the material plane and each gate is depicting our ascent back to reunite with divine source. We see this theme repeated in Jacob's ladder where there are seven rungs on the ladder back to heaven and according to the Jewish teachings before the coming of the Messiah the first angel representing the 70th year exile of Babylonia climbed up 70 rungs and then fell down. So again we see there is a connection to the path back to God and the number seven. This path back to God consciousness through these gates or levels is relayed in the verse Matthew seven fourteen, Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life and few there be that find it. The number seven is relating this to our ethereal self. And one and four equals five, which is symbolic of our covenant with God. So let us see where the chariot card falls on the Fibonacci sequence. And we see it is on the number 13 in the sequence. And number 13 is also positioned at the top of the ancient Egyptian number key, connected to the third eye and crown chakra. 13 is also connected to the number 13 death card. However, this is not something to be feared, as it is representing the death of our physical container. 
For we must understand that we are ethereal beings in our truest form, for that is how we were first created from God consciousness. Therefore, symbolically, when we are incarnated on the material plane within our physical bodies, we are in death, unlike our ethereal self, which is immortal. We also see another connection to the physical within the number 13. For when we add 1 and 3, this equates to 4. And as we saw with the Emperor card, 4 represents foundation and the earth. So this is what the death card is symbolic for, the death of our physical containers on the material plane. However, the establishment have used the fear of death as a tool to control the masses. And they have ensured that the herd were not only programmed to fear physical death, but to also fear the number 13 and view it as evil, when in fact it is symbolic of the resurrection of our soul and life. When we look to the ancient Egyptian number key, the number 13 is related to the third eye and crown chakra. We can even view these two chakras as working together as these energy points represent where our soul consciousness meets God consciousness. The crown chakra actually begins at the Ajna third eye chakra, which is connected to us physically at the pineal gland, and then permeates out into pure consciousness to sit above the head as a crown. This is why the crown chakra is sometimes shown at the third eye pineal gland area as this is the point where our soul and our consciousness reunites with God. It is the gate through which we leave our physical containers, and it is actually referred to as the gateway in the Hindu tradition. On the Kabbalah Tree of Life, the third eye pineal gland is relating to Dalith, also called Dor, once again showing that it is at this point we reunite with Divine Source. We can also see this spoken of in scripture as meeting God face to face or eye to eye. And in this verse it is symbolic of the third eye pineal gland opening to see God face to face. But this is done through the heart first. Psalm 27 8 When thou saidest, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. 2 and 7 equal 9 and is symbolic of the Divine Trinity, the Divine Twin Souls and God meeting face to face. And the number 8 is symbolic of the Immortal Soul and God's Source, and is also connected to the heart on the ancient Egyptian number key. In the Hindu tradition, the Crown Chakra is called the Sahasrara, and is the seventh primary chakra, so again we have a connection to the number 7 chariot card and the Crown Chakra. The crown chakra is considered to be the chakra of pure God consciousness and it is symbolized by a lotus with 1,000 multicolored petals. It is located either at the crown of the head or above the head. This chakra contains the white drop or bodhicitta, a Sanskrit word meaning that which is conscious. In the ancient Hindu teachings, the crown chakra is represented by the color white and is connected to inner wisdom and the death of the body. In Tibetan Buddhism, the point at the crown of the head is represented by a white circle with 33 downward pointing petals. It is of primary importance in the performance of Fawa, which means the projection of consciousness after death or a transference of consciousness at the time of death in order to obtain a rebirth in a pure land. So again, in both these different cultural teachings, we see that the death of the physical body is connected with this chakra, which is symbolically what the 13 death tarot card is also showing us. The pure land they are referring to is symbolic for a time on this realm at the beginning of the cycle, when all including Mother Earth are at the height of an illumination of divine consciousness. The ancient Egyptians called this Aru, the field of reeds. And this is the place all souls aspired to rebirth into, a new cycle of incarnations beginning with a golden age. The reuniting with God consciousness at this point is also depicted in the symbolism of the third eye chakra, where we see the sun and the moon shown on either side of the triangle. The triangle points downwards, representing ethereal and divine forces being brought down onto the physical plane. 
The sun is symbolic of the male twin soul and the moon is representing the female twin soul. It is at this point the Trinity are reunited and this is symbolically represented by the triangle over the large white circle in the middle. The seed syllable for this chakra is the syllable Om and the presiding deity is Araharishvara who is half male and half female representing Shiva and Shakti. As we now understand from previous videos Shiva and Shakti are symbolic of the divine male and female twin souls in their ethereal forms. In the ancient Hindu texts it says in the repetitive cycle of the eons Adaharishvara is ordained to reappear at the beginning of every creation as in the past. And Atpala, a 10th century Indian mystic, called this form the Lord whose half is the fair one. So we can see the divine twin souls and unification with God consciousness are being symbolically shown connected at this point. In Kwai Gong, a form of martial arts, the highest Dantain is located at this position. This is known as one of the three furnaces that converts energy in the body. In this Dantain, the spiritual Shen energy is converted into Wuji, the infinite space of void. This void, Wuji, is referring to the space in the vortex that connects our consciousness with the divine consciousness. And this is why we see that the heart and third eye pineal gland are connected. For as shown in the previous videos, the heart is the other vortex that also connects us to God. Finally, we see this connection to God consciousness, Orion and the number 13, also shown in an unusual artifact found in Ecuador in the 1980s. The artifact was made of a very ancient black stone and etched upon it were 13 levels of bricks leading up to an eye. When the artifact was put under a UVA light, these etchings illuminated. Even more interesting, on the bottom of the pyramid there were also symbols etched into it as well as gold inlays representing Orion's belt. This conclusion of the inlays equating to Orion's belt is also shared by the well-respected researcher Claus Donor. When the symbols on the bottom were translated by a German linguist Kurt Schildmann, he said they were a very early pre-Sanskrit language and what they translated to was the son of the creator comes. So now we have a clear representation in the artifact of the illumination of Orion and the divine twin souls represented by the sun which also equates to Jesus and Mary Magdalene. And this illumination of the divine souls is an illumination of that part of the divine within us all. This is the end of part one of number eight in the Mystery Teachings series. In part two, we will look further into the information being unlocked within the symbols and numbers connected to the chariot card and ancient Egyptian number key. We will also uncover a connection to the numbers and symbols related to these chakras and the esoteric knowledge of the Freemasons.